You've probably heard this term thrown around a lot with movies. There are all kinds of movies that are so bad that they're good. Take Sharknado, for instance. But more often than not, when a game is bad, it's... it's really bad. Unplayable. But sometimes, a game slips through those cracks and becomes so bad it's good. I love the power glove. It's so bad. Though, of course, whenever we talk about top tens and game quality and such, just remember that it always falls into the realm of opinion. If you have a different opinion, just let me know in the comments. People love sharing their opinions, and so, before we get into the video, let me tell you about Opinion Outpost, which is a website where you answer survey questions and give your opinions on certain things, and in return, you earn points, and then you can turn those points into gift cards. Back in high school, I did this all the time to get some extra spending money for games, so I can personally vouch for that. When they asked me to spread the word to you guys, I figured a good number of you may be in a similar situation. Short on extra spending money, and the big game release season is just around the corner. So, big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Check out Opinion Outpost by following the link at the top of the description and sign up to take surveys and make money. Doing so also helps this channel. Now on to the video. So first, at number 10, let's talk about Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu is a game that was panned by, well, just about everyone. It's a bare-bones fighting game where Shaquille O'Neal was brought into another dimension to fight a mummy. It's a very lazily designed game and can literally be beaten by only pressing the kick button at the right times. But if you stop trying to take this game seriously and play it as a bad game, it becomes hilarious. The silly AI, the silly graphics, the ridiculous concept. If you have the right people playing it, you can still get a ton of enjoyment out of it. Even though, technically speaking, it is a terrible game. And speaking of technically terrible games, next up at number 9 we have Skate 3. Oh god. The bugs. No! No, please, not the bugs! Not the bugs! <laughs> Uh, open world skateboarding game that tries so hard to take itself seriously, but it is full of so many bugs, and it has a ridiculous AI on the pedestrians, which combined makes for hilarious compilations such as the ones you are seeing now. If you enjoy just aimlessly wandering and seeing what hilarious things are possible in a physics engine, then this is the game for you. Just make sure not to download the patches, because after fixing a lot of these bugs, the game just becomes legitimately bad. It's boring. Unlike the number 8 game, Goat Simulator. Now, now hold on, I know exactly what you're going to say. This shouldn't count because it's a game that was designed to be so bad it's good. It shouldn't count. But, uh, well, why not? Like, give me a legitimate reason why not. Sharknado, again, this movie was also designed to be so bad it's good. Just like Goat Simulator. Anyway, in Goat Simulator, you play as a goat and you wander around a small open world or two and you be a goat. But you are an invincible goat. You can get a jetpack, lick cars, and be dragged around by cars, and be hit by cars, scare people, sell your soul, summon whales, all kinds of things. Again, technically speaking, this game is pretty terrible. But that's all part of its charm. Playing it with the right people or while you're drunk is the best. But back to games like Skate 3. In the number 7 spot, we have Big Rigs, Over the Road Racing. First off, who ever thought that racing 18-wheelers is a good idea? Well, apparently not the guys who made this either, because they didn't seem to bother. Bugs galore. Including falling through the world, infinitely accelerating, not slowing down when going up hills, and much, much more. But again, if you don't take this game seriously at all, it's a blast to race with your friends and see who infinitely falls first. At number 6, I'll give you Jaws Unleashed, and this will be the quickest summary yet. On one hand, the game is kind of boring, looks and sounds ridiculous, and is just plain mediocre. But you get to play as Jaws. Number 5, Deadly Premonition. Most reviews for this game will use the line, it's so bad it's good, somewhere in them. You work for the FBI in a game whose characters fit beautifully into the uncanny valley. And speaking of how the game looks, this Xbox 360 game looks like it belongs on a Dreamcast. The audio is always out of sync, the controls are just awful. Like, imagine Resident Evil tank controls, but in a game where those don't work, and make them worse and clunkier. Also, you have to use the right stick to aim, but also the face buttons to shoot. Like, what? But if you manage to get used to the controls among the many, many other problems this game has at a technical level, you still get a pretty entertaining survival horror adventure. Especially because of how weird and quirky the whole game is. It has a lot of charm, when you look past all the crap. 
Number 4, Bionic Commando, the failed reboot. This game gets panned a lot, significantly more than it deserves. Like, it's not a good game, heavens no, but that's why I love it. It has its moments, like the swinging is awesome when it's not frustrating, and the shooting is cool when it's not bland, and the plot is... Well, the plot is just bad, but despite all this, I had more fun with this game than many other good games that came out the same year. Easily, because if you just stop taking the game seriously and play it with a buddy, it becomes hilarious and a real blast. Now for number three, how could I make a list like this without mentioning at least one Sonic game? Sonic has a lot of ups and downs, some great games, and some not so great games. Most of Sonic's bad games are just plain bad though, I mean, unless you are already a Sonic fan, then maybe you can look past its faults, but even if you are not a huge fan of Sonic, I'd argue that Shadow the Edgehog fits here well. Take Sonic's edgy rival, give him a gun and a choice between good and evil. The plot, the voice acting, and the worlds are also... <laughs> what? It's honestly a very enjoyable game to me, despite being technically bad with bad level designs, bugs... Damn, not here. Plot, the controls, ugh. But if you don't look at these downfalls as awful and instead look at them as ridiculously hilarious, Shadow the Hedgehog goes from being a terrible Sonic spin-off into being one of the most entertaining modern Sonic games. And I would be lying if I told you that I didn't complete it 100% and have absolutely no shame in doing so because this game is awesome, despite being terrible. And honorable mentions to Sonic R, which is also really, really bad. But if you play it with some friends and make fun of it the whole time, it's amazingly hilarious. At number two, I'll put a personal favorite of mine, Earth Defense Force 2017. So giant ants and spiders are coming to take over the world, you shoot them a bunch. That's the plot. Really, this game feels like a terrible action sci-fi B-movie from the 80s. And I love it for that. It features terrible graphics for its time, silly AI, horrid plot and voice acting, a miserable physics engine, and all sorts of things that make it technically a bad game. But then why is this so dang fun? Especially in co-op mode! The guns and the weapon variety make it awesome, and being overwhelmed by shots coming from everywhere provides just enough of a challenge. And this is part of a series that just keeps getting better and better, well, it, except for 2025. That one is legitimately bad, but the recent Earth Defense Force 4.1 made it all the more excellent. I'd even say it's legitimately a great game now, especially with its split-screen co-op. And for honorable mentions, we have Blood Rain. 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand, Total Overdose, The Mario and Zelda CDI Games, Zoo Race, PN03, Rumble Roses, and Two Worlds. And at number one, this is my favorite little hidden gem, a game so horrible that it's hilarious, Rad, R-A-D, Robot Alchemic Drive. This is a game I recommend everyone try at least once. It's about giant robots fighting giant aliens, and you don't control the robot directly. You play from the perspective of a guy on the ground with an RC controller, and you use that to fight. It's a concept I've never seen done elsewhere. The controls are, um, very odd, terrible even. You use R1 and R2 to move your right foot forward and back, or L1 and L2 to move the left foot. You use the analog sticks to control the arms, and it's almost a one-to-one. -one meaning you have to actually move the analog stick in a way that lets you punch. It's weird, but the enemy also has to deal with these terrible controls, so it's still very balanced. The graphics are horrid, even for the time, and the voice acting is... Oh my word, the voice acting. We can feel tremors from their violent crashes. Could this be the coming of the Armageddon? It's legitimately the worst voice acting I've ever heard. Like, you can't even. I'll be giving this game the honor of a full review in the future, but despite all of these terrible aspects in it, I always find myself coming back to it, introducing it to new friends who always love to make fun of it and to play it. Seeing who can master the awful controls first is honestly a ton of fun. And there you have it, my picks for the 10 best worst games. Games that are so bad, they have transcended badness and become good again. At least for a while. What are some more that you can think of? Let me know down below, and while you're down there, why not check out Opinion Outpost? Tell them some of your opinions on surveys and get some gift cards for your next gaming adventure. Signing up is easy, so until next time, you stay awesome and never stop using that noggin. But you never know when an awesome video idea literally just pops itself right in front of you.
Slowpoke! Slowpoke, go! Attack! You've probably heard this term thrown around a lot with movies. There are all kinds of movies that are so bad that they're good. Take Sharknado, for instance. But more often than not, when a game is bad, it's... it's really bad. Tens and game quality and such. Just remember that it always falls into the realm of opinion. If you have a different opinion, just let me know in the comments. People love sharing their opinions, and so, before we get into the video, let me tell you about Opinion Outpost, which is a website where you answer survey questions and give your opinions on certain things, and in return, unplayable. But sometimes, a game slips through those cracks and becomes so bad it's good. I love the power glove. It's so bad. Though, of course, whenever we talk about top just around the corner. So, big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Check out Opinion Outpost by following the link at the top of the description and sign up to take surveys and make money. Doing so also helps this channel. Now onto the video. So first, at number 10, let's tell you earn points, and then you can turn those points into gift cards. Back in high school, I did this all the time to get some extra spending money for games, so I can personally vouch for them. When they asked me to spread the word to you guys, I figured a good number of you may be in a similar situation. Short on extra spending money, and the big game release season is just